In this video, I will be discussing about graph traversal using depth first search. So this is the second part of the graph traversal series. In the previous video, we discussed about what is graph traversal. So basically we studied that depending on the order on which vertices are visited, we can classify graph traversal into two techniques, BFS and DFS. In the previous video, we discussed about BFS. We understood the concept as well as implemented it in C++. So let's just do the same for depth first search. So now let's try to understand what do we mean by depth first search. So depth first search can be thought of as a single searcher who is probing unknown area as deeply as possible, retreating only when meeting dead ends. So let's try to understand this with an example. So I've taken this graph which has seven vertices and let's think of this graph as a battlefield and we have a soldier who is at position A. And this soldier wants to explore this battleground to find out if their enemies are present. So if it goes by the method of DFS, so he will pick a direction and go towards it until he meets a dead end. He goes toward B. From B, he will go towards C because there is only one direction possible. From C, let's assume that he goes towards D. From D, if he goes towards A, then he will know that he has already visited A. So he will not go towards A. From D, he will go towards E. From E, he will go towards F. From F towards G and from G towards C. So we basically start from a node and goes as far as it can a given path, then backtracks it until it finds an explored path and then explores it. So here we saw that from D, he goes towards A, but since A was already visited, so this is a dead end. So instead it backtracks and from B, he goes towards the next unexplored path that was towards E and from E, he goes towards F for G for C. So that is how a DFS is done. So now once we have understood the basic concept of DFS, so if we have to implement it, the two main questions that arise are which data structure should we use and how do we avoid cycle? Let's try to tackle them one by one. So the first question that we have is which data structure should we use? So the data structure that we have to use here is LIFO data structure, which is stack. So by LIFO we mean is last in, first out. So it means that whatever was the last element that was inserted will be the first one that is out. When we're talking about DFS, we saw that we are exploring the area as deeply as possible from A to B, from B to C, from C to D. And now we have to retract from here because A has already been visited. The basic concept of DFS is in alignment with stack because this was the last node that was visited. And from here we have to explore the next unexplored node. So we have to keep in track the last node that was visited. So only a stack can do it because the top element of the stack was the last used one. So now many students face an issue that they are not able to remember that which data structure should they use for BFS and which one they should use for DFS. As I told in the previous video also, you can just remember the word barbecue. So here you can see that B is for BFS and this is the Q. So it means BFS has to be used for Q. So if you remember this word, then you will be able to remember which data structure has to be used for which algorithm. Also, when we're talking about DFS, D is related with depth. So when we're talking about stack, we usually relate with, with height and height and depth are interrelated. So we can say that DFS uses stack. So once we have that clear that which data structure we have to use, the next question that comes is how to avoid cycles. So to avoid cycles, it is quite simple that we just have to keep track of the nodes that we have already visited. So we can keep an array or a vector to keep tracks of the nodes that we have visited. So we have these nodes. So we have A, B, C, D. So from A we go to B, from B we go to C, from C we go to D. So if we do not keep track that these three nodes we have visited, then from D we will again go to A and from A again go to B. So this cycle will keep on repeating and this will be a never ending cycle. So to avoid this, whichever node we have visited, we keep a track of that. When we at position D, we know that we have already visited A, so we do not need to go on this search. So that is how we can keep track of the nodes that we have visited and avoid cycles. So now let's try to see what is the DFS algorithm. So as we have seen, to implement DFS algorithm, we need two data structures. First, we need a visited array. So let's say I have created a visited array, which has seven elements. So in this visited array, we'll keep track of which of the nodes we have visited and we'll have a stack. So we'll have the output here. So now let's see what does the algorithm say. So the first step is add start vertex to stack. So start vertex is A, we add A to stack and mark 
start as listed. So we mark A as listed. Now the next step is while stack is not empty, so stack has one element, we pop the top of the stack. Top of the stack is A, so V becomes A. And whenever we are popping from the stack, we'll append it to the output array. And for each adjacent vertex of the popped element, we have to check which elements are not listed. So when we consider A, the adjacent elements are B and D. And both of them are not listed as you can see in the listed array. So we have to add them into the stack and mark them as listed. So let's add them to the stack. So we can add first B or then D or first D then B. So the order doesn't matter. So we'll add B and D and we'll append both of these in the listed array. After this for loop ends, we again come here. So we check while stack is not empty, it has two elements D and B. We pop the top of stack D, so the output becomes AD. So the stack currently has only B. And for each adjacent vertex of D, we have to check which are the nodes that are not listed. So for D, we have three adjacent vertices, A, C, and E. So first we check A, but A has already been listed. So we will skip this. So here what we have done is if we have added A again to the stack, then we'll keep shuffling between A and D. So to avoid this to and fro, what we do is we keep track of the listed elements. So since A was already listed, we do not push it into the stack. So we'll push the remaining elements that have not been listed. So the remaining neighbors of D are C and E. So we'll push C and E to the stack and we'll mark them as listed. We again come here, while stack is not empty, stack has E, C and B. We pop top of the stack, the stack is now B and C. And for each adjacent vertex of E, we have to check the neighbors of E. The neighbors of E are D and F, but D has already been listed, so we'll push F to the stack. And we'll mark F as listed in the array. We again come here, while stack is not empty, the top of the stack is F, output also as f so now the stack is so now we have to check the neighbors of f neighbors of f are g and e but e is already listed so we push g into the stack and mark g as listed so now again we come here while stack is not empty we pop top of the stack the top of the stack is g so we append g here to the output so the neighbors of g are c and f both of them have been listed so we do not do anything in this for loop we again come here while stack is not empty G was popped, so now top of the stack is C. We pop C, and again the neighbors of C are B, D, and G, all are listed, so we do not do anything. We again come here while stack is not empty, and now top of the stack is B. We pop B also, and the neighbors of B are A and C, and both of them are listed, so we do not do anything here. After we come here again while stack is not empty, the stack is now empty, so the DFS traversal ends here, and this is our DFS traversal. So one thing you can notice here is at each point you will have many options in which order you can put in the stack. For example at position A you can either push B or you can push D. At D you can either push C or you can push E. So whichever element you push first depending on that the order will change. So there is no fixed traversal for DFS so there can be multiple DFS traversals for the same graph. So now we have seen the iterative approach of using DFS algorithm. Now let's try to see how we can implement the same algorithm via recursion. So as you know that recursion uses the implicit stack. So instead of using an external stack, we'll use the implicit stack that is used in recursion. So we'll have an array to keep track of the listed nodes. And let's assume that A is our start element. So let's see what the recursive algorithm says. So we have a function DFS. So in which we pass the start node. So V currently is A. So mark V as listed. So we mark A as listed. For each adjacent vertex of A, if that is not listed, we again do the DFS traversal. So let's try to print the recursive track of what this algorithm is doing. So what it has done is it has called DFS A. For the adjacent vertex of A, it has again called the DFS function. So adjacent vertices are B and D. So for first it has called this function again. So let's assume we are first at B, so we have called it. And once we are calling this, we'll again mark it as listed. So B we have marked listed. So when we are at B, we'll check the adjacent vertices of B, which are C and A. But A is already listed, so we'll call C. And we'll mark C as listed. So once we are at C, we have D and G. So let's say we call D. So we mark D as listed. 
So once we are at D, reduction nodes are A, C, but A, C are already listed, so we call E. At E, the neighboring nodes are F and D. D is already listed, so we call F. At F, E and G, so we'll call G. When we are at G, we go at position C, but C is already listed. So this is a DFS traversal A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So now once we have seen how the DFS algorithm works, let's see what are the important applications of DFS before jumping in the code. So first important application that we have is topological sorting. So what do we mean by topological sorting is that if in a graph, if there is an edge from U to V, then in the topological sort, U should come before V. So if we take this example, in this graph, there is an edge from 5 to 0 and 4 to 0. So in the topological sort, 5 and 4 will come before 0. There are many applications of topological sorting. One application is in operating systems. So in operating system, whenever we have few programs that need to be scheduled and they are dependent on some other resources. So how the operating system does is it checks that for scheduling this program, what are the resources that are required? So only when those resources are available, it then schedules the program. So those resources can be thought of 5 and 4 and this 0 can be thought of as a program and this can be resource R2 and R1. So until these both resources are met, we will not schedule this program. So that is how the topological sort is used by operating system to schedule the programs. Another application that we have is for cycle detection graphs. So if we are given a graph and we have to detect whether there is a cycle in this graph or not, we can do this via DFS traversal. We have to look for back edges. So by back edge, we mean that if there is an edge for a vertex to itself, or for any of its ancestors in the BFS traversal. Then we say that there is a back edge. Let's say we are at this node A, B, C, D, E. And if we are doing BFS traversal and we are at node C, let's say. So if we are at element C, we check the recursion stack of this element. If the node itself is present in the recursion stack, that means that this node has already been visited before. So that means that there is a cycle in the graph. So we look for the back edges and then we can check if the cycle is present in the graph or not. So another example that we have is solving puzzles with only one solution. So let's say in May's problem, if we are given and we have to solve this, so we can solve it using DFS. Let's say we take this path, we come here. So this is a dead end Then we have to again backtrack and we'll go to another path. We come here. This is a dead end. This is a typical DFS problem where we go to the path as deeply as possible and then you backtrack when you meet a dead end. So for solving maze or for solving Sudoku, we can use DFS traversal. So one thing I would like to mention is that when we're doing DFS traversal, if we are using a start node, then it will visit all the nodes of the graph only if the graph is connected. But if we, the graph is disconnected, let's say the graph is like this. And if you do a DFS traversal from A, then you will only visit A, B, C, D. You will not be able to visit E and F because these are not connected. If you're not sure whether your graph is connected or not, so what we'll do is in the visited array, so we pick a starting node. Let's say we pick the starting node as A. So we have this A, B, C, D, E, F. When we pick a start node as A, we have visited A, B, C, and D. What we do is we check this visited array and we see that which is the other nodes that are not visited. So E is not visited, we pick again E. So now E is the start node. And we again do a DFS traversal from E. Then we'll reach E and F. So in case of disconnected graph, we have to look for visited array and check if there are any elements that have not been visited. So now let's have a look how we can do DFS traversal. I'll be using C++ and all the code that I'll be showing, I have uploaded in my JIT repository. Link of that is available in the description. So now let's jump into the code. So this is the code for the DFS traversal. So I've taken seven vertices and I've created the adjacency list representation of this graph. So I've added all the edges. And then I have this function DFS iterative in which I pass the graph and the starting node. So I'm starting the traversal from node zero. So in this DFS iterative, I create a visited array of size equal to number of nodes of the graph and I initialize them with false. I create a stack and I push the start node on the stack and I mark the start node at visited. So while the st stack is not empty, I pop the top element of the stack and print it. So this will print the DFS traversal. 
and for the neighboring nodes of this particular node, I check which of the nodes have not been visited and I push them in the stack and mark them as visited. So I'll keep doing this until stack is empty and then this DFS traversal ends and this will print the whole DFS traversal. So this is the iterative approach and for the recursion approach, so I've created this function DFS recursive. And in this function, I'm passing the graph and the visited array. So I've created the visited array here only because in each iteration of this function, I have to pass the visited array. So I've initialized it outside the main function. So this function DFS recursive, I have this parameter as graph and this visited array and this node. So I mark the node as visited and I print it. So this will print the DFS traversal. And this part is similar that for all the neighboring nodes, I check if the node has not been visited, then I again call the DFS recursive function with this node. So this will also print the DFS traversal of this graph. Let's see what is the output when we run this program. So the output is starting from node 0. It prints 0, 3, 4, 5, 6, 2, 1. And that recursive function prints 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So as I've told that for the same graph, there can be many DFS traversals. So one of them has been printed here. So it doesn't matter which of the traversal is it printed, but we have just traversed through all of the nodes in a DFS manner. So that is all that matters here. So the code will be available in my GitHub repository. You can refer it there. So this was all about DFS. In the next video, I will be comparing both PFS and DFS and we will analyze which of these algorithm is better suited for which kind of problems. If you have any feedback or suggestions, please leave them in the comment box below. And if you like my content, do like, share and subscribe to my channel. And until next time, this is Sandeep Thapar signing off.